Hello and welcome to Interactive Music Theory Level 1. My name is Calvin Cummings and this is Lesson 7 out of 14 sessions, uh, all to do with what music looks like in its written form. Uh, in the description down below you will notice that there is a workbook that I'll be referring to constantly throughout this course. Uh, there is an extension puzzle which will be touched on at the end of the session as well as a couple of other useful links that you'll find uh, quite helpful in regards to reinforcing this uh, music theory in there. Right, so in today's course we're going to look at uh, being able to learn out about what tones actually are. We're going to differentiate between what tones and semitones are. We're going to figure out what uh, quaver rests are and how to write them. Same as with semi-quaver rests and how to write them. We're going to have a look at some more Italian terms and signs, which will be a test on me because I don't speak very fluent Italian. And we're going to have a look at, or well, listen to, sorry, some um, oral tests there to do with being able to tell the differences between tones and semitones. The order we're going to go, so we're going to have a quick wee revision over what semitones actually are. We're going to have a look at what tones are. We're going to have a uh, wee quiz there in regards to what tones are uh, in a bit of a game. There's a bit of a listening test in regards to um, being able to hear the differences between tones and semitones. Now we're going to have a look at quaver rests. Semi-quaver rests will match the rests to their particular notes. We'll have a look at those Italian terms and then we'll finish it off with uh, a bit of a puzzle there which is doing um, some explanation on some other musical terms. So, semitones. Now with these ones here on a piano, a semitone is the is the smallest distance possible between two notes. Now for example, if I had this C note here, oh, a C note here, there we go, uh, that middle C, the smallest possible distance to get to its next note, while well, we could go down that way and go to a B note if we wanted to there, that would be a semitone. We could go from that B up to this one here, which is a C sharp, or it can also be a D flat, we've learned about that in previous lessons. But it's right beside. So a semitone is the smallest distance possible. I'll give you another example. So if I chose, for example, this G here, okay? So C, D, E, F, G. That one there, semitone, wouldn't be these white keys, because these black keys here are right beside it. So a semitone could be that one there, which is an F sharp or Oops, or G flat, or it could be the one just above, which is a G sharp or an A flat. Okay, so the idea is that a semitone is the smallest distance possible between two different notes. Now, just to re emphasize that, let's have a look at our piano. Now, with this here, if I played that note there, which is a G note down here, and I went up there, there goes a semitone. If I hit that G note again, that G flat or that F sharp could be a semitone. And I could do the same with any of these notes. I could go E to F, that's a semitone, or E to E flat or D sharp, that's a semitone. Smallest possible distance, okay? So make sure that you've got that locked in your head. So semitones is the smallest possible distance between two different notes. They're right beside each other, they're neighbours. Okay? Now, knowing that, our first work today is going to be on page 15. So we're looking at tones this time. Now a tone is made up of two semitones. Um, we're stepping from one note to another, but it's got like another note in between. So for example, this C note here, I'm going to, yep, I'm going to choose C here is going to go up to a D. Now, in this case here, we knew that before a C to a C sharp was a semitone uh, because it was right beside, boom, okay? Um, however, the difference is this time, one semitone, whoops, well, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that a little bit neater. So, one semitone comes up there, whereas two semitones equals one tone. Let me explain. So, this C goes to a C sharp 
then go from that C sharp to that D. So what it's doing is it's creating two semitones would end up equaling that one tone. So I'm gonna get, actually I'm gonna get rid of that there. To simplify it, one tone equals two semi tones. Okay, so I'll simplify it as much as that. So that tone from that C to that C sharp to that D, there goes our tone is the same as two semitones. Let's have a look at it on the piano. So here's my C. My C to my C oh, sorry, my C to my C sharp is a semitone. However, this time here I'm actually counting two of them. So it's from that C to that D. That there is the tone. So C to D is a tone. I'm just gonna create this so you can actually see the notes here. So C, this is the C sharp, goes to a D. Okay? Right, so Coming back to where we were before, let's have a look and see another tone. This one here, I'll change color on this one, is an E note, and we are, actually I'll make that a bit better. So this E note is going to go from that F, and it's going to go up to that F sharp. So, in this case, that E misses that because that's a semitone version of it, but it goes to an F sharp. So there, miss that, there. So a semitone is right beside a tone is two semitones, or it's two places. All right, there to there is a tone. Um, there to there is a tone because we had that flat in between. Uh, that B down to that A is a t is a tone because it misses that B flat there. Okay, so just being aware that a tone is made up of two semitones. Uh, they're also called whole steps there as well. It's another useful name to remember. So let's have a quick look at this. Now, in this particular case here, we need to figure out exactly which of these notes are in place. Now, we've, we've done this before, and by being able to reinforce these different notes here on the treble clef. So we've got F, A, C, and E, we've also got every good boy deserves fruit. So we've been able to identify all of those ones there on that treble clef. By doing that, we can figure out that this one here is an F note, that one there is a G. Now may I recommend that you should be at this point here uh, memorizing where each of these notes are, whether they're on the bottom line, the top line, middle line or in the space, you know, in one of the spaces, you need to be figuring out exactly where those are. Now, in order to do this here on page 15 well, what you really should be doing is having a look at either a keyboard like this, reminder that this is uh, onlinepianist.com backslash virtual piano, um, and a link will be in the description down below, and we need to figure out exactly how many notes are going to go in between. So we go from an F to a G, and now that's on a treble clef, so here's my middle C here, so we're talking the G just above it, sorry, the F above it. Here's my F, here's my G. Now the question was, circle the tone, so we need to figure out which of these is actually a tone, so those two semitone spaces. Is that one of those? Well, let's have a quick look. Here goes my F, F sharp would be the semitone, and going up to the G. In this particular case here, that would be a tone, so G, from that F to that G, it is a tone. So what we're going to do is we're going to circle that. That one's valid. So we'll look at this next one. If we, we're going through every good boy, so we're looking at B for that particular note there, going to a C. Now they sound like they're going to be a tone apart from each other, but let's have a quick look. Here is mine, and let's have a look exactly which one. So it's not middle C, it's the one just above it. So we're looking at B sets of notes. Here's my B. And here is my C. Now notice that this time here there's no key in between. So that there is actually in, it's a semitone. So it's not, not a tone this time around here because it's right beside. So in this case here, no. It's a semitone, not going to cut it. Right, let's go to this one here. This is a G. Can we renew that from there? And that's going up to an A because that's how music works. Goes full octave of notes up to a G and then starts for a new set. 
Let's go back to our keyboard. So here's my G. Semitone to get up to there, but I'm wanting to get to an A. So G to an A. It is two semitones or a semi, uh, sorry, or a tone. So in this case here, yes it is. All right, let's do one here. F. And that one there, it's on an F line there again, but that little symbol there turns it into a sharp. That's right. So in this case here, that's going from an F to an F sharp. That should be a capital, by the way. So um, that's that one. It's right beside. That's the semitone. I'm not going to cut it this time here. Okay. Then we hit these ones here. Now, be careful on these ones because... On these ones here, we are looking at notes on a bass clef. So this is from the left hand side of our notes. Um, on that um, piano there before that I was showing there. So a reminder, so that's A, E, we've got, sorry, sorry, A, C, E, and G. Um, and when you've got the other ones which are sitting before all of those as well. So let's just be really, really careful that we've got A, C, E, G. So that's all cows eat grass, remember? And then you've got the other one there for the lines. So that there is a G. And we're talking, in this case here, a low G. There's my middle C, excuse me, in middle C. That's that C down there. And we are going from that C up to its next line, so that is an A. We already know that G to an A is a tone, and that, that would be the same from here, from here, from here, anywhere the this, this same distance applies. So in this case here, yes it is two semitones or a tone. This one here is an E going to an F sharp. Now let's have a look. That's a low version too, so E, F sharp. E to F is a semitone, F to F sharp is another semitone. So this means that we've got two semitones or one tone. So this one here does work. This one here is a B to middle C. We know B to C doesn't work, so we can already write that one off. We've got this one here is an F, and that's going to, well, it looks like an A this time around. Now, straight away, I've already got alarm bells on this. F to a G is a tone, so I'm thinking that is going to be way too far. So that F to that A, let's count how many semitones we've got. So F to F sharp is one, F sharp to G is two, G to G sharp is three, G sharp to A is four. So we've got four semitones. If we were looking for two tones, that would work, but in this case, no not going to cut it. So these are your potential answers there on page 15. All to do with us being able to tell the differences between these different notes and figure out whether they are tones going two steps rather than semitones or in that case they're a lot further. Right, so let's have a quick wee look here at these ones here on page 15. What is the note which is higher than an A? Well where is our A? So we already know that a C is to the left of those two black keys. We know a B is to the right of those three black keys there. So if that's a B, just before that must be an A. So what is a tone higher than an A? Well, A going to that one there is a B flat or an A sharp. And then go there. So there's our second step. Brings us to a B. So in this case here, your answer would be B. Right, next one. Let's go a different color on this. This one here, we're going to go green. So what is the note which is a tone lower than E? Well, let's find out where our E is. So that's an A, B, C, D, E. Here goes my E note. And we're going a tone lower this time. So we're going to go two semitones, but we're going backwards. So we're going to that black key there first, because we don't forget those. And then we go to that one there, which is a D this time around. So the reality is that this note here should be a D. Okay, there goes my tone lower than an E. Now, what is a tone higher than a B? Let's go uh, blue for this one here. So B, we already know is there. Um, so let's use that one. So B, we're going a tone higher this time around. So we're going to go to C. There's a semitone. 
and to that one there, which is our second semitone, so that makes it a C sharp, or D flat. It can be either, okay? So like that black key has got two names. It's, it could be a C sharp, because it's one higher uh, than that C, or it could be a D flat, it's one lower than that D. Right, and let's go to this last one here. I'm gonna go yellow on this one. Hopefully you're able to see it. Uh, we're gonna go a tone lower than G sharp. So G sharp is this black key here. Boom, G sharp, also known as an A flat. So in this case here, we are looking for a tone which is lower. So, there's my G flat, or sorry, my G sharp or A flat there. So, semitone lower gets me down to G. Semitone lower again gets me to this black key here, which is an F sharp or a G flat this time around here. Okay, so finishing up on that one there. F sharp or G flat. Okay, so big message to take away is semitone is the exact note right beside it. The tone is two semitones, okay? So make sure that you get the um, differences between those ones there. Now what we're gonna do here is we're going to be able to figure out uh, within this melody which one of these are tones. So um, within this one here, E to an, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to rewrite that thing out for you now. We're gonna have to use our memory on this now. So that's an E, it's going to be G, in that case there, too far. So that E to that G is way too far. We've got an F and an F sharp and things in there. We've got a C to a D though. Now that's got a C sharp in between, so this here would be a tone. This one here, that D to that E, let's have a quick wee look on that one. D, it's got a D sharp and then E. So yes, that becomes a tone. That E going back to the D, well it's, it's still traveling two semitones, so yes, it should be circled this time around. Um, with this one here, D to an F. Now we know from D to an E is a tone. A F gives us one more semitone, so that's too far. Same with those ones there, it's too far. So this G to this F, let's have a quick look at that. So here's my G, here's my F. Now I've got the F sharp in between, so G to G, G flat, or F sharp, there's one semitone. And then from that black key down to that F, gives me a second semitone, so this here is a tone. That F to that E, they're right beside each other. So that's an example of a semitone this time around. Won't be an example of a tone. That E to that D, we already knew that from before. And that D to that, well, it's a B this time around. So that one there, in this case here, that D, that's four different steps. So that's too far for our tone. That's not gonna work. And that B to that C won't work either. So in this case here, these ones are your only tones that you can circle on page 15. Now, to help you remember where all of these notes are in a treble clef, and in fact, um, in bass clef, an alto clef, a tenor clef, all, all of them, um, there is a game called Star Wars, which is available uh, by the description below here in this YouTube video. Um, I really suggest that if you've got um, you know, like a phone or a devi you know, device of any sort and stuff that you do download it. There are equivalent ones out there and stuff which do help kind of reinforce that knowledge. But um, I've found that this game here is quite useful for those people who uh, super struggle and want to get that quick um, identification of where these different notes are. So um, the whole premise of the game is that you have to uh, use this little kind of, you know, Space Invaders type ship to be able to shoot the particular notes there and, be, um, and you have to confirm the correct note to be able to do that. Uh, if you don't then you lose one of your lives and things. So it's, you know, the incentive is to be able to get the correct notes so that you can keep getting higher scores. And it does speed up over time so it does get challenging uh, even for those people who are really, really good at it. So um, tones can also be called whole steps in some places. They can also be called half steps, okay? And I'm gonna test you on some of that knowledge here a little bit later on, all right? So let's have a quick wee move on. So, with this here, which of these is a whole step above E flat? We're gonna do five of these, okay? So, in this case here, a whole step is an example of a tone this time around. So, 
we're going to have a look at our E flat. So here goes my E flat here. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, I wanted to go a whole tone above that. So here's my um, E flat. Going to an E, there's a semitone, there's an F. So the reality is what's a whole step above E flat. In this particular case here, it is going to be an F. Let's have a quick look and see whether we were right. Yay! Okay, next one. So four to go. Which note is a whole step above C? So we're looking at a tone again. Okay, so this time here, we're going to change color. We're going to go uh, green. So let's go C. Let's go this one here. So here goes C. We're going a whole step above that. So you know, C. Semitones there, so that's a half step, but we want to go a whole step. So rather than that half step, we're going the whole distance. In this case here, whole step above C would be uh, D. All right, let's have a quick wee check to see if we were right. Yay! All right, let's go. Three more to be able to just lock this in, reinforce this. So which is a whole step below E? This one. Let's have a quick look at this one in blue. So here goes my E notes. And I could choose any E note, but I'm just gonna choose that one there just because it's nice and simple. So here's my E. I'm going a whole step, so I'm going two steps. So there's my E flat, there's my D. In this case here, answer a whole step below E should be a D note, okay? So getting the concept here, we'll do two last ones here just before we move on. Um, this one here is, uh, what is a whole step below C? Oh, that one there probably won't be too hard for us. So, um, below C, well, let's go this one here. So here's my C, a whole tone. The, would, well, a semitone would get us to the B. A B to that one there. So in this case here, it would be a B flat. Or I'm gonna write it A sharp. Could be that as well. Okay, so in this case here, B flat. Or a sharp. One last one, just to really lock this in what tones are all about. So here's the whole step above E. So now let's go this one here. So here's my E just to the right of these two black keys, I'm going a whole step above. So that goes to the F and it goes to here. So in this particular case here, it's going to that it's going to end up on that black key from those two steps, which is an F sharp or G flat. All right, let's just check that there. F sharp or G flat, okay? So the concept there, semitone is right beside, tone is two of those semitones in jump. Okay, so let's see how good your knowledge is. Make sure you've got a blank piece of paper for this because what we're gonna do is we're going to have a listen to see whether these are tones or semitones. Now have a quick listen to this. Because what you'll notice is that with a tone, I'm like played at the same time, so these are like it's a harmonic tone. Um, you've got um, a little bit of a gap, but not much. Okay, I'll play that one more time. So they they kind they kind of work with each other. However, what you'll notice with a semitone is that the, because the notes are right beside each other you're going to find that they're going to be really, really clunky and like almost like they're fighting over the same space. So let's have one more listen to that. So here's a semitone versus one of these tones which is a bit further apart. Okay, so number one, uh, which of these is a semitone? You can choose A, B or C. Have a listen to the clues because you might find that uh, two of them sound fairly similar. Uh, and we're looking for the one of these, which is a semitone, okay? So here's number one, is it A, B, or C? Okay, I've got my hunch as to what I think it might be. So was it, uh, which one of these is a semitone? Is it A, B, or C? If you, you know, I'm sure you've got your answer by now, if you chose, in this particular case here, A, you'd be correct. So, have a look at that. Right beside each other, they're really, really clunky. Okay, which of these is a tone? So we're looking at the ones which is just ever so slightly further apart. So which of these is a tone? Is it A, 
B, hmm, or C. Now, one of those is correct. Let's have one more go. Which of these is a tone? Is it A, B, or C? All right, I'm sure you got your answer there by now. Let's have a quick look. And the correct answer this time here was C. Okay. Slightly further apart. Okay, which of these in number three is a semitone? Let's have a quick look. Is it A? B or C. Now this one's going to be harder because all three of them are completely different. So what we're really looking for this time to find that semitone is the notes which are really really challenging each other and they're, they're kind of almost tripping over top of each other because they're right beside each other as opposed to a tone which is going to be slightly further apart. So let's have a listen to them one more time. A B or C. Now this one here, I know it's a trickier one, but once you've got your answer, let's have a confirm. The correct answer this time here was, in fact, B. You can hear that they're kind of crashing against each other as opposed to those other ones there. So, last one for our tones versus semitones listening test. Uh, which of these is a tone? Is it A? Is it B? Or is it C? Now, two of those sound similar to me, so I've got my hunch as to what it might be. Let's see what you have. So for number four, which of these is a tone? Is it A? B? Or C? Once you've got your answer, Congratulations to those people who chose A, you'd be correct. So there we go. Um, we got those nice and separated there. So, knowing that, let's move on to the next part of this lesson, which is looking at quaver rests. Now, quavers look like a seven, uh, kind of like a seven that's actually been sat on by like a heavier something else. Uh, and it is worth half a beat in commonly used time signatures. So, and this matches up to um, these notes here, so remember how we had these quavers, the ones which had the wee tails on them? That equals half a beat. So does this. So one of these is the, it's the rest version of this. So there goes our quaver, this is our quaver rest, okay? So on page 34, let's work on being able to draw some of these. Now you notice that within this tracing option here at the top, We've got this one here, it's kind of like a ball type shape there, yeah, but it's one consistent move. So you've got kind of that ball sort of shape, flicks up there and goes down. So ball, flick, down. Okay. Now when we pop these on there, so after you've traced those, it happens between that line and that line. Now a reminder there, so we're talking not the top line and the bottom line, but the ones further in. So the fourth line from the bottom, and the second line from the bottom works in this gap, like so. Actually, probably a little bit sense, more centered than that. So it's covering over that middle line. Notice how, with each of these, how I've got a gap below and above this. So within each, each of these here, those there are representing half a beat of this particular bar here, which is not being played. One, only half of that. There on page 34. Give me a line of those and you'll be sweet. So let's have a quick look and see how many we can find within this piece of music. Well, in this case here, we can find one. One is there. Uh, that's a crotch beat rest, so we don't want to touch that one, but we can find a quaver beat rest there. We can find a quaver beat rest here. We can find another one here. And it looks like there is one more of those little seven looking doodads there. So in this particular case here, one, two, three, four, five. The correct answer there on page 34 is five semi-quaver rests that you can spot within that piece of music. All right. Now, knowing that, the, or well, not the opposite, but the semi-quaver has two of these um, curved parts here, uh, which is the rest version of this one. So where we had that one there, but with two tails, 
which is equal or equivalent to a quarter of a note. This here has two of those there, so we've got a quarter beat rest. Now that there should actually be connected. So on still on page 34, what we're going to do here is we're going to try and trace these ones out first. So you'll notice that with the directions that I've given you that there's a couple of movements on this one here. The reality is that much like a quaver, you can kind of do that one as one movement. Okay, so you can do curve up there and straight down. You don't really have to move your pencil or pen for that. But the next step is that you have to connect that second part up there. Okay, so once you've traced through each of these, trace that, then you should be able to move that in. Now the difference when we're popping it onto here is that rather than it being just within that gap there, that tail carries down a little bit because it's kind of got an extra part to it. So in this case, we've got it going down a little bit longer. Actually, probably not that long. It's more like that there, where you can see the gap just underneath that. Okay, so boom. Boom. And so on. Okay, so what we should be looking for is a whole line of these here. So make sure that you've got them with a little bit of gap underneath, a little bit of gap up the top, but that one there matching up all of these. So give me a line of those there on page 34. Now, let's see if we can match them all up. So, uh, let's go red for the sake of this. Uh, let's go Let's go large, semi-brief. So in this particular case here, we are looking for one which is um, hanging down from that fourth line up. So out of all of the ones here, that's going to be connecting with that one. And this next one here, let's look for the one which goes for two beats. So these ones here both went for four beats. In fact, I might actually write that. So that's four beats, and that's four beats here. So let's look for the one which goes for two beats, that minimum, which is over here. So where's its opposite? Well, in this particular case here, it's another one of those little boxy things, but this time here, it's sat on top of the uh, middle line within our stave. That's this one here. Okay, so that one and that one are connected. Let's have a look at the next one here, the crotchet, which is this one here, only goes for one beat. The opposite to that is this one here, that lightning bolt looking thing. Then we've got the next one is the one we've just finished. So let's have a look at where our quaver is, the one which goes for half a beat. So here goes my half. And we're going to its opposite. It's the one which only has one of those little bits there because it's a one tail. So one of those little flicks. So that's this one. Half, just like so. Which means I've only got one more to do by process of elimination. Here goes my semi-quaver. Whoops. Semi-quaver which lasts for four, oh sorry, a quarter, which is going to go straight up to here, which is also a quarter, but this is its rest version there on page 34. Okay. So, let's have a quick look and see which ones of these we can find. So, that crotchet was the one where we had that lightning strike attached to it. So, let's have a look and see whether we can find as many of those as we can. So, where's our lightning? So, we've got one crotchet beat rest, two crotchet beat rests, three crotchet beat rest, four five, six, there's lots of them, seven, here goes my eighth, okay, can I spot any more? No, it seems to be just eight of those, so I'm going to pop eight in as my answer. Quavers, so this time around it was the one where it only had one of those reflex, it was like that number seven, so let's look at that, so we've got one of those quaver bit rests here, two, three, hmm, four, can you spot any more that I haven't circled yet? Oh, there we go. There goes our four crotch or quaver beat rests. And now, just lastly, to finish this off, how many semi quaver rests have we got? Now, the way that we are able to spot these is because they've got two of those little flux. So, here goes one, here goes two, here goes three, four, five, six, and seven. So, in this case here, seven quaver beat rests. So in this piece of music here, well not piece of music, but this puzzle here, we've got eight crotchet rests, we've got four quaver rests, and we've got seven 
of these semi quaver rests. Alright, so let's see if we can match these up. So, in this particular game here, we're going to have to try and figure out from using our memory which of these kind of matches up. So, remember that we had two pages ago, boom, boom, boom. We had these ones here where we had the particular notes matching up to the rest versions. That there is what's going to be useful for being able to complete this task. So, let's have a quick look. There goes a crotch of beat. We need to get that lightning um, bolt looking thing there. So the crotch of beat rest. Let's go right beside it. Let's see if it's that. In that case there, nope. That there is a semi quaver rest. So we need to kind of lock that in the back of our memory. Let's have a quick look and see if we can find some more. So, there goes a crotch of beat rest. I think we know this one. Just beneath that. Pretty sure for memory that was our crotchet beat. So here's the crotchet rest. Here's the crotchet beat. All right, so there we go. We've got one pair sorted. All right, let's carry on. Here goes. Oh, it's another crotchet. Okay, so we're going to have to find another one of those uh, crotchet rests there with that little laser force looking thing. Uh, that there is a semi breathe. That one goes for four beats, so that's definitely not the right one. So let's carry on. What's that one there? Well, that one there is hanging down which would be off the fourth line from the bottom on the stave or staff, which would represent four beats. So that one there and that semi brief, they work with each other, okay? So, uh, we've got a semi quaver rest here, we've got a crotch it there, let's see what else we can find. Hmm, that's not useful. That one there is one of those minim rests, so that sits there on that third line. Let's see if this one is it. No, that's a crotchet rest. But we know from process of elimination that that crotchet and that crotchet rest, they will be able to be eliminated, which gives us only these last ones remaining. Let's see, it's the bottom line here, which we haven't touched on yet. So let's have a see what we've got here. That is a quaver. So it goes for half a beat. Go the one beside it. Hey, there's a quaver rest. So that was incredibly lucky for us. And we go this one here, there goes my minimum, which goes for two beats. Pretty sure that was its opposite here. Yeah, that's right. And a process of elimination, here goes my semi quaver, and here goes my semi quaver rest. Okay, time to do that, just over two minutes. Yeah, could have been worse. Now here on page 41, we've got uh, some more Italian terms that are going to be very useful for us. And these are all to do with uh, tempo, in most cases. So uh, we've got uh, allegretto, which is moderately fast. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. Uh, it's usually considered to be faster than on andante, but um, slower than allegro, okay? which was uh, done in a previous session. Uh, we've got lento, which is very slow, which is slower than adagio, really slow, often used within like funeral dirges and things like that. Uh, we've got this one here, which is um, cantabile, which is kind of in a singing style, which um, kind of accompanies something else. So it'll be like a um, allegro cantabile or uh, lento cantabile, so like it, it kind of works in relation to um, other ones there. We've got poco, which is another word which kind of works in relation to others. It's, um, this translation is a little, which means that you would have, um, you know, for example, poco crescendo would be go a little louder, or poco diminuendo um, or decrescendo would be poco decrescendo, go a little bit softer. Okay, uh, and then we've got this last one here, so, which is uh, kind of one of the coolest ones out of all of these little symbols here. It's like a, a little um, man sitting in a kind of an igloo. Um, it's called fermata, and that there is a pause. So uh, especially for those singers or guitarists and things, that they're, whenever you see one of these within your piece of music, basically it is telling you to just sit on that note, that, that whatever note that, that happens to be right over the top of and just really, really eat it up. So for singers who uh, are able to pull out that last note and just sing what feels like forever, um, this is where that particular symbol would come into action. Same with guitarists when they pull that last little big solo note. Alright, so looking at page 41 here, we've got these ones here, Allegro, Andante, Adagio, Moderato, Presto, uh, allegretto and lento, we need to figure out exactly what order that they all go in. Now let's have a look at it. Um, this work here is on previous um, lessons work, uh, so you could be checking your notes from that um, description down there below. 
Um, you could be checking your previous notes from the workbook, which again is in the description down below. But if you have a look at your previous notes, the fastest out of all of these, because we're going to go fastest through the slowest, the fastest this time around is Presto. Okay, so we've got that one out of the way. So we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, Lento, I'm pretty sure you can save that one till the end, but the next fastest out of this, uh, we've just mentioned it um, before, is uh, Allegro followed by Allegretto. Okay, notice how they're really, really similar at the start. So Allegretto is kind of like a small, um, small version of um, that one there, so it's not as fast as Allegro. Then, that brings us to the next one, which is Andante. So we're starting to get to kind of that walking pace, so like a moderate sort of pace there. Talking about moderate pace, moderato sitting in there next, meaning that we've only got two more of these to be able to complete. So the uh, slower one from that, or the, the next one in regards to keeping them from fastest to slowest, would be Adagio. You know, slowly or very slowly, and slowest out of these ones here is Lento. Okay, um, so do check your notes and exactly what each of these particular ones there stands for. But in regards to if we're playing a song super super quick, da -da 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 -da, that's presto. If we're going really slowly, that's your Lento. Okay, all of that on page 41. Now, I remember. Um, Sesame Street, there used to be this game uh, or this little clip there where they were trying to find one of these things that is not like the other. This is one of those there. So we're going to have a look at these terms here and figure out which of these terms here doesn't belong. So um, all of these are musical terms. We just need to be able to make sure that we've got them in the well, a spot of which one happens to not really fit. Like, you know, it, it, are all of them about tempo and then the other one's about uh, volume? I don't know. Let's have a figure out. So forte. Piano, poco, mezzo forte. One of those doesn't belong. Now, mezzo is to do with being loud. Piano is to do with soft. Poco means little. And mezzo forte means moderately loud. So one of those doesn't fit in this particular case here. That word poco, that's not a volume thing. You could use it as a volume thing, but in this particular case here, it's just by itself, it doesn't make sense. So let's have a look at these ones. We've got uh, Andante, we've got Crescendo, we've got Allegretto, and we've got Lento. One of those doesn't belong. Now you'll notice that from that previous page work, uh, or previous slide that I had there, that we were looking at tempos, but Crescendo is a volume based one. That's yeah, getting louder. Whereas Andante, Allegretto, and Lento are all tempo or speed based words there in Italian. Then we've got these ones here Ritenuto, Accelerando, we've got a Rallentando, and we've got that uh, Cantabile, which in this case here is going to be the one that's going to match up. These three here are all to do with how fast or how slow something's being played. Uh, that one there, in singing style, well, you could use it in relation to one of those. But the reality is that that one there should be buddied up with one of these ones, as opposed to changing the tempo within our piece of music. Okay, all on page 41, as well as this here. So let's see if we can answer these six questions here together. Now, here's our piece of music. We've got not only the pitch of notes that we've got, we've got, thankfully, some numbers here representing our bars. Uh, we've got some instructions about changing of the volume and speed and things. We've got the set tempo there at the start, and uh, we've also got our time signature, our key signature, everything's kind of in place. So, what does the term at the beginning of this mean? Well, in this particular case here, it's talking about adagio uh, uh, cantabile, or cantabile, which, in this case, cantabile, in singing style, adagio, Slowly, so put them both together slowly in a singing style is what this piece of music is going to be done So what speed should the piece of music be played in this particular case here? Well, we've already answered that slowly Okay, adagio where we're going to be playing this one slowly What should the performer do in bar four? Well, let's have a look. Here's bar one now notice that I'm not counting that there That's like a, a pre bar there. So it's not even like a whole bar so we've got bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four. 
poco, meaning little, accelerando, accelerate. So we're speeding up. So, but because it's poco, yeah, speeding up a little. Okay, so not going too crazy. What, um, how loud should the piece be played in bar three? Well, let's have a look. There's no instruction, but let's go back. Still no instruction. MP. So the most recent volume instruction that we've been given in this particular piece of music is MP, mezzo, piano, or moderately soft. Okay? So in this particular case here, this is going to be played moderately soft for most of this. Uh, what volume should the last note be played? Well, last note, two of those Fs, so it's not forte forte, it is fortissimo, which means a very loud. So that last note there, and what does the symbol over that last note mean? There goes that um, juicy we one there where it looks like a man in an igloo. It is that fermata, which means that we are going to be holding that last note. So that means in this particular piece of music, if they're singing it or playing it or whatever, that note there is going to be played for what could potentially feel like forever. All right, depending on uh, how the musician wants to really go with it. So that's this particular piece of music and all of the instructions that it is giving us. So, uh, to finish off this uh, lesson here, have a quick wee look at the extension puzzle. This one here is to do with um, Italian sort of terms. Now, this is how phones used to work, okay? Um, with these here, each of these numbers has a collection of different letters that will kind of match up. So, uh, for example, in this one here, which is the definition has been said to be very fast, um, we're looking for the Italian word, seven is the letter that we're looking for here so let's have a look seven it could be a P it could be a Q it could be an R and it could be an S now if you have a look at the term very fast you'll notice that your word here is going to start with the letter P okay um, next letter is going to be in this bunch here is a P a Q an R or an S in this particular case here it is going to be an R okay I'm not going to give you any more because otherwise I'm just going to give all of them out for you but what you should be able to find is within this here, you are being able to reinforce those Italian terms that you've been able to cover already. And also, just as a quick bonus here, you'll be able to find out what city the opera house does the Phantom of the Opera Prowl. You'll be able to find out the answer from that from using the same one here as well. So thank you very much for um, sitting with us through this uh, interactive music theory level one lesson seven. I uh, look forward to catching up with you in the next lesson there. Uh, remember to make sure that you uh, click the notification bell and that you have subscribed. Uh, and if you've got any questions and stuff, we've got all of the information down in the description down below. But my name is Calvin Cummings. Thank you very much. I look forward to catching up with you next time.